Hello and assalamu alaikum uh, everyone. Uh, this is Kashif Kamran and I welcome you all to the day three of the advanced audit and assurance practice to pass webinar for June 2021 exams being organized by ACCA Pakistan. Just before starting on with the proceeding of day three, can all of you confirm me that you can hear me loud and clear? Okay, that's great. So let's let's start on with the proceeding for day three of this practice to pass webinar and let's see what is the agenda for the day three. Now on the day three today, uh, I will be focusing on a very important topic, uh, which is ethical and professional issues and which is uh, in terms of your exam paper is a very regular feature. Uh, even though I have spent a lot of time on this same topic in my previous webinars, uh, whether it is the March 2021 webinar or the December 2020 webinar, which I will still recommend all of you to watch alongside the June 2021 webinar. But because it's an important topic and it's a critical feature of exams, so I cannot miss this topic from my June 2021 webinar. So we, we will be exploring ethical, professional and quality control issues in the live webinar today. Alongside that, uh, when I was ending my day two yesterday, I hope you all remember, uh, we were exercising the use of spreadsheet in a computer based exams. And how can you make use of a spreadsheet in a computer based exams and in what circumstances uh, will a student use a spreadsheet in a AAA exam? So I, I just want to connect from that discussion first before I move to my main discussion on ethical, professional and quality control issues, right? So just before starting on with the proceeding for day three, uh, I will just spend 30 minutes uh, where I left yesterday on day two. That was the spreadsheet and what is uh, what is the purpose and when a student should use a spreadsheet in a computer based exams in, in a AAA paper? I, I hope you all remember that if you were in the day two live session that we ended on spreadsheet and I, and I want to continue from the spreadsheet onward today and want to spend good 30 minutes on it before we conclude whether a spreadsheet should be used or it should not be used in a AAA exams when you're opting for a computer based exams. Right, so uh, let's let's get back to that. Uh, can you all confirm me? Uh, you remember where we ended the day to yesterday? We were in in a spreadsheet analysis. We were using a spreadsheet in a computer based exams, right? So I just want to start my discussion from that point onwards. So let me take on my word file first for the day three and let me set the objective for the day three. Now the objective for day three today. Is two. Firstly, my objective for day three today, objective for day three, number one, is to uh, guide you about the use of spreadsheet in a computer-based exams. Use of spreadsheet in a AAA computer-based exams. And secondly, I want to guide you about ethical and professional issues. So these are the two things uh, I will be focusing on today. So let's first start with the use of spreadsheet. In the AAA computer based exams. Now I just want to take a quick recap and I want to have an affirmative conclusion on spreadsheet today so that you know the importance of spreadsheet in a AAA computer based exams and you know whether you want to use it or you don't right. Okay, it's the day three, sorry. Okay, so use of the spreadsheet, right, in the AAA computer based exams. Now, first of all, uh, I hope uh, over the last two days of this webinar, you have started to use the practice platform. Do confirm me that. And you are gaining confidence on holding the practice platform and on using the practice platform, right? Uh, and even the blank workspace. I, I guided you about the blank workspace yesterday. And we still have three days, right? So by the end of the three days, you will be in a perfect position to use the practice platform. Now use of spreadsheet in a AAA CBE. Let's let's get to some conclusions here. First of all, 
uh, when we look at the AAA paper and we look at the type of paper the AAA is, when you look at the type of paper AAA is, the word processor is the most common response option a student will be using in the exam. Now, now you know when you go to your practice platform, on a practice platform, you have a response option, which is known as the word processor. I hope you all agree with me. And this is the most common response option a student perhaps will be using in a computer based exams for AAA. Now, if I take you to that practice platform again, uh, I hope you're off, you are familiar with the interface of the practice platform. You go to the catalog, you click international. Under the international, you go to the ACC official resources. You click on the past exams and we were doing the September 18 paper yesterday, right? So you assign the September 18 paper and then you come on the left left hand side of your screen and you start attempting the September 18 paper where we left yesterday. So I'll resume the September 18 paper where we left it yesterday and I click on the next button. So I reach the question. This is the question we were doing yesterday, right? Now on the left panel, you can see the exhibits and you can see the response options here, right? If I can just show you one thing very clearly, you can see the response options given here, right? One is the briefing note, which is basically the word processor and one is the spreadsheet, right? So in the question number one, because we need to write the question number one in the format of the briefing note. So examiner refers this to a briefing note rather than a word processor. But when you go to the question number two of the paper and you go to the question number three of the paper, the response option will be labeled as word processor. I hope you're all clear on that, right? But in the question number one, the word processor will be labeled as a briefing note because in the first question, you have to attempt the answer in the format of a briefing note. So is everyone clear? Briefing note is the same as a word processor in the question number two and question number three. But the examiner has labeled it as briefing note because you need to answer the question number one in the format of the briefing note. And the second response option you have is a spreadsheet. Now, is there any relevance of using spreadsheet in a AAA paper? Why is the examiner giving you a spreadsheet as a response option? Is it mandatory to use it or is it optional? Let's let's get to those questions and answers. Okay, so in, in the AAA, the word processor is the most common response option, right? A student will be using in the exam paper. But the second thing is, is use of spreadsheet mandatory? Is use of spreadsheet mandatory as a response option? Is, is that an important question? Is, is that a question which pops uh, in the minds of the students as well? Is, is that an important question of which you will be looking for an answer from the tutor? Right now, let's find the answer. Is, is use of spreadsheet mandatory as a response option in the AAA paper? The answer is no. Now, why? See, there are two things. First of all, you need to understand that in a AAA paper, uh, what sort of calculations are you doing? What sort of calculations are you doing? You, you are not doing an SBR paper, right? You're not doing a financial management paper. You're not doing a financial reporting paper, right? You're doing a AAA paper. So what sort of calculations in the whole 100 marks paper are you doing? For example, you're doing calculations of materiality or you are doing calculations of ratios or you are doing calculations of the trends over the last year trends over the last year this is the maximum calculation you are doing in a triple a paper do you agree with me anything else you are doing in the triple a paper beside this in terms of calculation you find materialities and you find ratios and you find trends right that's that's the maximum right you do in a triple a paper so when this is the definition of the maximum calculation you are doing in the AAA paper, tell me, can all of this calculation, can all of this calculation be performed on a calculator? On a calculator. Can all this be performed on a calculator? Like, like you do in a pen and paper exam. Like you do in a pen and paper exam. So you, do you have an on-screen calculator? 
given in the exam on screen calculator can you use it and can can you use your own calculator use your own calculator is that is that possible yes so a certain student might say i'm very comfortable with using the on screen calculator and i'll not take my calculator to the exam hall and one student say no i'm more comfortable taking my own calculator and acca say so it's permissible so i think the the nature of calculation in the triple a paper can be done on a calculator right you don't need a spreadsheet for that am i right do you agree right so i think first of all you need to understand the nature of calculation we are doing in the triple a paper and then you need to understand that the nature of calculation in the triple a paper can be performed on a calculator so then the spreadsheet is an optional parameter but can spreadsheet improve your speed can you take less time to prepare your answer if you use a spreadsheet i want to demonstrate that and, and i want to spend 30 minutes where i would show you that is calculator use more beneficial or is a spreadsheet use more beneficial which save time now for a certain student you might say calculator and a certain student might say spreadsheet if some of you are using excel in your day-to-day -day life you will say excel save time but if some of you are not using excel in your day-to-day -day life you will say calculator am i right how many of you use Excel in your routine lives, in your office environments, back at home? You are very familiar with Microsoft Excel and you use it. Right? So if, if any one of you has a capacity or have a tendency of using Excel on a daily basis, you will say Excel or a spreadsheet is a better, better way to answer than a calculator. But if, if someone of you have never touched upon Excel or is very weak on Excel, you will say calculator. So will there be will there be one answer? No, there will be two answers. Some of you will use calculator. Some of you will use Excel. So I need to demonstrate both and you find your own answers, right? Let's let's get to the uh, conclusion here. Now, the last thing in a triple A exam. Uh, just like September 18, just like September 18, question number one, where the question where the question was on audit risk, where the question was on audit risk, the examiner did ask students to specifically utilize analytical procedures. Specifically utilize analytical procedures. I think you saw this question yesterday, right? Uh, no, 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 not at all, Rabia. Uh, it's, it's totally your own discretion. Totally your own discretion. So, if I hope you remember the question yesterday, we were doing September 18. And in that September 18, question number one, yesterday, examiner was asking students to specifically use analytical procedures. Specifically use analytical procedure. Now, if a question like this comes in exam paper, where in a question on ROM or a question of audit risk, the examiner specifically ask you to perform analytical procedures. Now, what is the literal meaning of the word utilize the analytical procedure? For that, you need to watch my March 2021 day one webinar, because in my March 2021 day, when, day one webinar, I guided students about the, I guided students about utilize analytical procedure so you can take the guidance from there utilize the analytical procedures and i even guided students about the marking scheme of analytical procedures and how will you score marks so i would not spend time on that in my webinar today because that will be waste when when you have something in the recorded form already available so how will you score marks so will all of you watch the march 21 day one to understand how you perform analytical procedures and how you score marks on it. My only purpose today is to show you how you do it on a computer based environment, how you do it on a spreadsheet or on a calculator, right? That's that's the only purpose. So apart from performing calculators for materiality, you might even need to perform calculators for analytical procedures. So that's that's an extra relevant. So let's let's get back to my equation calculator. Calculator versus spreadsheet when a question asks for 
when a question sorry spreadsheet when a question ask for this utilize the analytical procedure right control c control v question mark so calculator versus spreadsheet when a question asks for an analytical procedure let's see which is more beneficial for a student i'll, I'll perform both and you choose at the end of the day which one will you carry in the exam paper let's 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 first start with the calculator use of calculator now if you are using a calculator right in the exam and you go back to the question number one we were looking for yesterday can you see the question number one in front of your screen now right now your examiner asks you in the partner email you open the partner email and in the partner email you saw that the examiner is asking you in the question number one to evaluate the audit risk and when the examiner is asking you to evaluate the audit risk examiner is also asking you you should utilize analytical procedure and the moment examiner asks you you should utilize analytical procedure now one student might think of doing it on a spreadsheet and one student might think of doing it through a calculator now let me first show you if a student thinks about doing it on a calculator how would you do it now you need to perform using a calculator the analytical procedure so you open up your briefing note uh, i hope you understand i made this briefing note yesterday so it's automatically saved so we write the briefing note to from subject introduction and i tell you that you have to fill up the introduction yourself then we have the requirement a audit risk with analytical procedure and you put down results of analytical procedure now you're using the calculator right and you make a table over here can you see the table option given uh, in the header i am using my cursor to click on the table i click on the table and i go to the table i need three columns one two three i need three columns and i need six rows one two three four five six so i need a three multiply by six table three columns and six rows and i click on it and a table comes here can you all see the table insert it so in the first column i write the ratio and in the second column i write 20 x5 and in the next column i write the 20 x4 the last year so i write the ratio here and i write the 20 x5 here and the 20 x4 here i hope you all can see that if i can increase the font size of this okay i hope you can all see the table now right so i inserted the table because i want to use the calculator now i want to calculate the ratios right so once i need to calculate the ratio i'll go to the statement of financial position can you all see the statement of financial position on my screen now opening up given by the examiner right now i i cannot type anything in the exhibit exhibit which is giving the statement of financial position if i click on a cell it will say if, if i click on a cell and type writing it will say locked cells cannot be modified so i cannot write anything in the exhibit 3 but i have the values given so i'll open up my calculator which is given on the screen okay let me close the unnecessary windows um, and let me formulate my workspace neatly so i need my table in front of me and in with the table i need my balance sheet with me and i also need my calculator with me so i open up the calculator and uh, just one minute i open up my calculator and i drag the calculator on the left hand side and i turn my calculator to a standard calculator like this now can you all see we have the current assets which is 1450 current assets which is 1450 and we have the non we have the current liabilities which is 597 so we have the current assets 1450 we have the current liabilities 597 so i'll divide them on the calculator 1450 in the current year current assets divided by the current liabilities 597 and i get the answer is equal to 2.43 2.43 now that's the current ratio so i i go back to my table and in the current year i write 2.43 that's the answer for the current ratio in the current year current ratio see i'm using the calculator then i need to find the answer for the last year so i go back to the balance sheet i see the last year current assets were 1420 
and last year the current liabilities was 547. So I divide 1420 divided by 547 is equal to 2.59. So last year the current pressure was 2.59. So I type over here 2.59. So I, I found my current pressure for both years using a calculator and I wrote the answer in the table. The current ratio is 2.43 and last year it was 2.49. In the same way, I go back to my balance sheet. I find another ratio debt to equity ratio debt to equity ratio. And you find the answer yourself and in the same way I go to the PNL. I find the other ratios from the PNL and I, I keep using the calculator. So when you are using the calculator you have to uh, pop in and pop out of the SOFP. See I have to go to the SOFP. I need to see the value. I need to punch the value in the calculator. I need to find the answer on the calculator and I need to type it whether you're using a physical calculator or you're using an on screen calculator right now once the balance sheet is done you cross the balance sheet you move the calculator this way and you open up the PNL now in the PNL you have the values given now in the PNL we have the operating profit and we have the operating profit for the current year which is 350 and we have the revenue the revenue for the current year is 5770 so we can find the operating profit margin so how much is the operating profit margin we divide 350 with the 5770 sales is equal to and we multiply this by percentage sorry just give me one minute we have 350 as the operating profit and we have the sales of 5770 so that means we have a profit margin of nearly 6% right so you when you're using a calculator uh, I believe you have to do an extra effort of keeping the calculator on the screen if you're using an on-screen calculator or if you're using a physical calculator then you have to keep it on your table but you have to open up the PNL you have to see the values from PNL you have to see the values from the balance sheet and you have to un you need to find the answer on the calculator and type it over here so you will find the answer for operating profit margin and you will find the answer for like uh, in tax effective tax rate effective tax rate and you find the answer for like interest cover for example the last ratio from the PNL whichever five ratios you want to calculate interest cover and you find the answers of these five ratios and you fill up a table now once you find the answer of these five ratios and you fill up the table under the table you will start to do the commentary of the ratios that what is the risk in the ratio so for each ratio you will tell examiner for each ratio you will tell examiner what is the underlying risk what is the underlying risk of material misstatement to score one mark now you need to see my march 21 webinar day one for the commentary you need to see my march 21 webinar day one to see how you do commentary for each ratio to score one mark so every ratio with a commentary and every ratio with an underlying risk of a deal misstatement will give you one mark. So you find the current ratio and you convert the current ratio to an underlying risk of material misstatement. You get one mark and in this way you get your five marks. Now this is how you were how you were using the calculator and you were jumping into the PNL and to the calculator. You were jumping into the balance sheet and the calculator. So this is the use of calculator, right? So can you fit the table in the word processor? Right. Yes, exactly, exactly, Yolanda. You will be uh, you will be telling what is understated and what is overstated. Right now, my perception is that if you are using a calculator, you need to open the PNL one. You need to see the values in the PNL, and you need to punch the values in the calculator you need to find the answer on the calculator and you need to punch the answer in the table right that takes a lot of time i hope you agree with me 
how many windows I need to open. I need to open a briefing note window where I put a table. Then I need to open a PNL window. I need to see the values from the PNL window and I need to punch the values in a calculator, right? And once I find the answer on a calculator, I need to write the answer in my table. So is that a number of steps when you're using a calculator and you're using a word processor? So do, do you understand that the usage of calculator and finding the answers and putting them on a table will take a lot more time than working on an Excel? But even if you want to use it, you can. So can, can you just do the ratio analysis on a briefing note? The answer is yes. But my perception is that if you do the ratio analysis on a briefing note, that will take a lot of time. Right? Is that clear to everyone? So my perception is that when you use the calculator, you have to that that takes a lot of time when performing analytical procedures. This is my perception. You might agree with me or not, but I, I need to tell you that uh, the true story. So that takes a lot of time in performing analytical procedure. No, there, there is no autocorrect option for spellings, uh, Sayyid Atta At Rahman, and spellings are not checked right in ACC exams, so you're not worried about the spelling mistakes, but don't do much of the spelling mistakes, right? Few of the spelling mistakes is not an issue. So use of calculator, that takes a lot of time when you're performing analytical procedures, right? Because you have to open the calculator, open the calculator, then you have to make a table, make a table in a word processor, make a table in word processor. You need to uh, open. You need to open the exhibit. You need to open the exhibit. You need to open the exhibit for PNL and for the SOFP. You need to punch. You need to punch values in the calculator. You need to punch values in calculator. And you need to find answers on the calculator. And once you find the values, once you find the answers on the calculator, you, you need to put them in table on briefing note. So I think this is a lot of steps. But if you are comfortable with it, you want to use calculator, you still want to use the calculator the way I use it, you can. But I believe use of calculator on the screen for ratio analysis takes a lot of time over over the use of spreadsheet. No, you just need to show the answer of the ratio, right? Not the formula of the ratio, Mohit. So is everyone clear how we use a calculator? Have I demonstrated it rightly in front of the screen that how we use the calculator and how I jumped between the PNL and the balance sheet and the briefing node and how I made the table in the briefing node and punched the answers in the briefing node? Are you all comfortable with that step step by step analysis everyone? Right now if you're using a spreadsheet for analytical procedures. If you're using a spreadsheet for analytical procedures, that, that's much better. See this. I go back to my question. And I erase everything from here. What I just did, right? I just erase this table from here. I delete the table. And uh, once I delete the table, I have my briefing note ready. Briefing note two from subject introduction. A audit risk with analytical procedure, result of analytical procedures, right? And I go back to my PNL. Can you see my PNL here, uh, which is given by the examiner exhibit number four? I copy this PNL, uh, copy, and I go to my spreadsheet, which I was using yesterday. And in my spreadsheet, I paste the PNL. Yesterday I pasted the balance sheet, right? So I paste the PNL. See, my PNL has been pasted in the uh, spreadsheet. Now, once my PNL has been pasted in the spreadsheet, what will I do? It's so easier. Now I will simply have the values. Over here, I will put working, working notes. And instead of the working in the other columns of the working notes, I will put 20x5 and 20x4. I copy this control C and I put it over here control V. Now I will show examiner the working. The proper working, right? So 
just let me give me one minute i can reduce the size of the column so it can fit on one page okay now you can see it right so uh i have the text expense right you can see the text expense here which is 64 and 60 all of you can see that text expense so and i have the profit before tax the profit before tax given to me right the profit before tax is six three hundred and twenty two and two hundred and forty so I, I can find the effective tax rate for both years and i can write over here working i i did two workings yesterday i hope you remember that working one working two in the balance sheet you remember that in the day two i i did told you about how you copy paste the balance sheet in pnl yesterday in my day two webinar so i'm not repeating that please watch it so i did working two one and two yesterday's right so this is the working three i i simply press the control c in the in the exhibit and i came to my spreadsheet and i press control v and it automatically pasted control c control v okay so i'll do working three i'll write working three here the working three is for the text rate effective tax rate and i close the bracket and over here i'll write my answer i can increase the font size to 12 and i write my answer for the effective tax rate is equal to is equal to 64 divided by 322 multiplied by 100 so i find the effective tax rate here just one minute is equal to 64 divided by 322 i think one value is negative right so that's that's the reason it's giving this is equal to minus 64 divided by 322 yes so i just need to say is equal to 64 divided by 322 multiply by 100 and i find the value 19.875 percent so that's the value right then in the next column i say is equal to 60 divided by 240 into 100 and i find the value 25 so the effective tax rate has gone down from the last year can you all see that the effective tax rate has gone down over the last year i can just highlight this for the examiner now can the examiner see my working can the examiner see my working three for tax rate how i found 19.87 and 25 can he click on my cell and find the formula i used can he also see the formula I used yes he can i can i can just change this to a two decimal spaces right like this now when i go uh, when i do my ratio analysis on the spreadsheet with the working three and working two and working one and i go back to my spreadsheet right over here i don't need to put the table i will say result of the analytical procedure yesterday i show you how i put the result of current ratio i hope you remember that and in the result of the current ratio i refer to the working one now for for example my second is the tax expense i'm working today tax expense so i need not to put a table over here i will just increase the font size to heading two i'll put a tax expense here and i simply tell examiner after my ratio the tax expense the tax expense has reduced over the last year as shown in working three of the spreadsheet so do i need to put the values do i need to put the values so the tax expense has reduced over the sorry the tax uh, sorry the effective tax rate the effective tax rate which i calculated sorry the effective tax rate the tax rate sorry should be the heading tax rate the effective tax rate has reduced over the last year as shown in the working three in the in the spreadsheet which indicates that the tax expense and the tax liability could be understated now see am i putting the values will the assessor checking my paper go to the working three and check the answer will he check it has reduced from the last year right so when i have the values in the spreadsheet i will just refer to the working number and my marker who is checking my paper can go back and check the working three 
and can see this the text rate has fallen down over the last year will that save my time when i'm doing the commentary so on my spreadsheet i can i can do my workings and once i complete my workings i can come to the briefing note and i can just write the answers and identify what is understated and what is overstated right is that clear to everyone is that saving time over the use of calculator so in in the spreadsheet when i have the pnl and the balance sheet i can simply show the workings to the examiner right you have you you can you can work here on the working number 4 like this working 4 and in the working 4 you can find the operating profit margin right you can find the operating profit margin in the working number 4 the same way i found it like the effective tax rate and you can show examiner this is the operating profit margin sorry the operating profit margin is in the next line so control x and control v so you can show examiner this is the operating profit margin you can calculate the operating profit margin and refer it as working number 4 you can change the color see uh, Mo uh, mohit shake you need to do an analysis yourself i have guided you about how you use a calculator and find the answer and punch them on a table and i've also shown you how you copy paste the values on a spreadsheet the balance sheet and the pnl because when you have pasted the balance sheet and pnl on the spreadsheet you are not changing the windows right you have everything on one window see you have everything on one window you have the P you have the balance sheet yesterday you have the pnl today it's on the one window i just need to work on one window and find the answers I i'm not moving windows when i was using the calculator i was moving windows i was seeing the values coming back to the calculator i was typing the answer in the calculator and going back to the briefing note right so do you find how i used the calculator and how many windows i shifted everyone and when i was working on a spreadsheet i simply copy pasted the financial data on a spreadsheet and i converted the financial data into working 1 working 2 working 3 working 4 and when i find all my five ratios on the spreadsheet i'll go back to my briefing note and in the briefing note i'll start writing my answer just like i did over here in uh, telling examiner the references to the working number 1 and working number 2 Is that clear to everyone? No, you you need to copy paste the entire financial data, Mohit, and then you can use the selected one for your analysis. You have to copy the entire, and you can use the selected one, right? Because obviously you're not using the full balance sheet and full P and L. You're just finding a selected five ratios from the data, which which whichever five you want to find. So you have the balance sheet given. Copy that. you have the pnl given copy that now in the pnl and in the balance sheet you need to find five ratios of your choice whichever five ratios you want to work on and you show the working to the examiner and when you come back to the briefing note in the briefing note you do the commentary on those ratios by giving references to the working numbers i did give references to the working number yesterday on the day 2 and i did give reference to the working number today on the day 3 i i hope that's clear to all of you so you need to find uh, mohit and all the other students which option is better for you will you use a calculator and make a table on a briefing note as i did first or will you copy paste the data in a spreadsheet you will do the working in the spreadsheet and you will then come back to the briefing note and start doing the commentary is that clear yes spreadsheet will only be used mohit when asked when the question asked for analytical procedures right and that that is something i have been guiding you for the last 30 minutes that when a question asks for an analytical procedure is it better to use a calculator or a spreadsheet i i hope you're all clear on that right uh there is no method recommended by the examiner the examiner is open to both methods you can use the method 1 bahavel you can use the method 2 right you need to find which method suits you so is is everyone clear that you have two methods either you use a calculator finding the results of analytical procedure or you use a spreadsheet finding the results of analytical procedure but when you are using a spreadsheet things are easier because you just need to copy paste you will copy paste the financial data you will copy paste the financial data in the spreadsheet 
number one number two you will work on ratios in spreadsheet you will work on ratios in spreadsheet giving working note numbers giving working note numbers which i have demonstrated and once you work on your ratios giving working note numbers you will move back to briefing note you will move back to the briefing note you will move back to the briefing note and start commentary and start commentary on ratios by giving references to the working note number by giving references to working note numbers so these are just three steps when i was using calculator they were like three and three six and one seven seven oh, sorry six steps and half the steps when you're using the spreadsheet yes uh Tayyab, nadim you are allowed to use your own calculator uh in a computer-based exams but if you are giving a remote invigilated exams you are not allowed to use a rough paper but in a computer-based exam at a center you are allowed to use a rough paper which is given to you by the invigilator in the exam hall so the only difference between a remote invigilated exam and a center-based computer-based exam is that you can use a rough paper in a center-based exam but you cannot use a rough paper in a remote invigilated exam is that clear so have you find uh, how i use the spreadsheet for analytical procedure and how i use calculator for uh, for analytical procedure and will you have your own conclusion some of you will use a calculator still and some of you will use the spreadsheet so every student will have to take his or her own decision is that right so when you are doing the calculation for materialities in exam paper what will you use when you are using uh, when you are doing the calculation of materiality what will you do will you use a calculator definitely for materialities you have to use the calculators right but for the analytical procedure some of you might use the calculator and some of you might use the spreadsheet so any one of you who is good at excel please use spreadsheet but if you are bad at excel you still have time you have paper on the 7th of june you have so much time practice makes you perfect so will you watch the recording of the day three will you uh, see how i performed calculations using a calculator and how i performed calculations using a spreadsheet and then will you find your own conclusions which one will you use on the 7th of june when you have your actual triple exams is that clear to everyone right just one last thing before i move to the main agenda today you go back to the computer based exams i even guided you yesterday that when you write an answer on a briefing note like this and you simply put a cross your answer is automatically saved right so when you write an answer and you put a cross your answer is saved it will not go anywhere on a spreadsheet whatever you have written on the spreadsheet you cross it the answer is saved so whatever you write on a response option is automatically safe it will not disappear so once you complete your question number one and you have wrote your answer in the response options your question has ended you will click the next button and you will come to the question number two section b you start the section b and again in the section b you write your answer in the response option given you complete the section question number two and you press the next button and you go to the question number three and in the question number three again you type your answer in the word processor and you complete your answer and once you have completed the question number three and you press the next button automatically a screen will come in front of you which will ask you end exams right so currently I have attempted the question number one. Can you see it's given over here in the summary window? The question number one attempted. And the question number two and three not attempted. But in, in a real exam, because you will attempt all the three questions, so it will say question number one attempted, question number two attempted, question number three attempted. Can you all see that? And can you see over here, end exams, just at the lower left lower left side of the window can you see end exams here end exams so you click on the button end exams and your exam ends and you can exit from the exam hall i hope that's clear to all of you if you don't know about it 
So once you complete all the three questions, you come to a summary screen and the summary screen tells you you have attempted all the three questions and then you can move back to the end exam. You click the button end exams are, are you have chosen to end exams. If you continue, you will not be able to return to the exams. Are you sure you want to end exams? Yes, and your exam gets over. Are you sure you want to end exam? See the computer is asking you two times. Are you sure you want to end exams? Yes, and your exam gets over. See your exam is now complete. That's how you complete your exams in, in a realistic environment. Is that clear to everyone now? So you do the question number one, your answer is automatically saved. You go to the question number two, your answer is automatically saved. You go to the question number three, your answer is automatically saved. You click the next button and it will it, you will come to a summary screen and the summary screen will tell you that you have done all the three questions. You will say end exams. The computer in courtesy will ask you, are you sure you want to end exams? You say yes. Again, the computer will ask you, are you sure you want to end exams? You will say yes and the exam gets over and your answers have been saved and has gone to ACCA. Is that process clear to everyone? Ha are you gaining more confidence now on more features of the computer based exams everyone? Yes, the double check is a great feature, right? Because most of the times the students are sleeping in the exam hall and they can mistakenly say in exams. So the double check is really a good feature. So even if a student is sleeping in the exam hall can can get awake with a double check. So is that good? So can we move out of uh, the use of analytical procedure today and we move to the main agenda? So I hope you got some benefit of uh, use of spreadsheet in a triple exams. So it's not mandatory that you use a trip. Uh, you use a spreadsheet in triple exams, but if you want to use it for analytical procedures, you can. But if you find spreadsheets difficult, you can make a table in a briefing node and you can use the calculator. But for the materiality calculations, you have to use the calculator, whether you use the on screen calculator or you use your own calculator. Give me an answer all of you. Uh, with which calculator are you more used to? Uh, are you finding the on screen calculator better or your own calculator? Okay, your own calculator. Most of you are saying own calculator. Okay, that's good. So you, that means you will be taking your own calculators to the exam centers if you're going for exam centers and if you're going for remote invigilations again, you're taking your own calculators. Okay, and please. I've been guiding you since yesterday that watch my March 21 webinar because there are questions from student. What's the difference between audit risk and risk of material misstatement? I've already answered them in my March 21 webinar day one. I encourage that to all of you to watch it. So I think you didn't attend it the day day two yesterday when I encourage to watch the March 21 webinar. So please if you think that you need to gain knowledge on audit risk and ROM and the marking scheme of the analytical procedure. Every such thing is given in the March 21 webinar. So please make a habit of watching the March 21 webinar the day one which I guided you yesterday. Is that clear to everyone? We are moving to the main agenda now. Let me just finish it off. We we'll take the next page and we start with the main agenda for the day three. The main agenda for day three today is to work on ethical and professional issues. And I am I'm, I will repeat this again, right? That uh, my previous two webinars, March 21 and December 20, which is on my YouTube channel, uh, you need to watch them for your preparation of June 21 exams. You cannot just say I'll rely on the June 21 webinar and I go to the exam hall. The June 21 webinar is more focused on uh, the computer based environment and guiding you about how you handle the computer based environment. The previous two webinars were more content based, uh, more technical. They were telling you about the marking schemes. So I, I think the previous two webinars along with this webinar, that is a total of 45 hours and this 45 hours will be really well value adding value adding for all of you. I think I've repeated this on day one even on day two and I'm still repeating it on day three because there might be many students who are taking the day three as the day one for for the live webinars. Right. Okay, let's start with the main agenda ethical and professional issues. Okay, I'm moving back towards my PowerPoint presentation for day three. And on the day three. 
my previous webinars. Uh, I have covered ethical, professional, and quality control issue in my March 21 webinar. You can see the hyperlink here. And I have covered the ethical, professional, and quality control issue in my December 20 webinar. The hyperlink is here. So I will not repeat stuff which I've covered in my previous webinar because you have an opportunity to watch them. So would you like me to repeat things? Would you like me to discuss things which I've already discussed in the March 21 and December 20? Or do you have an opportunity to click on the hyperlink and watch it and, and I discuss something new with you? <laughs> right? So please make a habit of this of watching the previous webinar. Don't be lazy, right? Saying we cannot watch the previous webinar as uh, Sayyid Tahir Imam is saying both because I think you you uh, you are lazy. You need to go back watch the previous webinar along with you. You have exams on 7th. The good thing is my webinar is is being held early. So even my webinar finishes on the 1st of May. You have exams on 7th of June. So can you really benefit from the webinar after it gets completed on the 1st of May? Can you still watch the recordings of all the five days and the previous webinars? Can you do an excellent preparation up to the 7th of June? You can. Right, so that's, that's how you're going down with. Okay, now moving towards the agenda. Articles. Uh, for In terms of preparing for the topic, ethical, professional, and quality control issues, there are two articles which you should read. One article is exam technique article part one ethics. And one article is quality control a perpetual current issue. These articles are given to you in the handout section of the webinar. You can download them from there and it is already been shared on the student WhatsApp groups. I will also cover the do's and don'ts of examiner. What students do right and wrong when they're answering an ethical and professional question in exam paper. I will be doing two questions with you. One is December 18. Question number 3B that is on the practice platform and I will be doing September 18 question number 1D. Again, that's on the practice platform. So I'll do two questions. Purposely on the practice platform to encourage you to use the practice platform. And at the end of the day, what is your homework? Your homework is complete the questions I have discussed during the webinar and also watch the previous webinar. So that will be your homework. So let's start with the journey of day three. Let's start to discuss uh, ethical and professional issues and let me let me guide you all what you need to know about ethical and professional issues. Okay, let me take on my word file. Let's start with the analysis and start with the exam papers December 18 and September 18. Okay, now first thing. There is this topic ethical. Professional and quality control issues. Go down. In my June 21 webinar, which is today, I am discussing only ethical and professional issues. But if you want to have an understanding of the quality control issues, you need to jump back and you need to watch the March 21 plus the December 20 webinar because I have uh, comprehensively covered the quality control issues in my previous two webinars along with ethical and professional issues. So I'm not touching upon the quality control issues this time because I just want to refine the understanding of ethical and professional issues in my webinar today. Now all of you know that uh, ethical and professional issues is a very common jargon in the AAA paper is a very is a very common jargon in AAA paper. Am I right? Do you agree with me? If you have started practicing for the exams. Right, so ethical and professional issues or matters is a very common jargon in the AAA paper. Now it is it is next to impossible. It is next to impossible that you find an exam sitting without ethical and professional issues. So in every exam setting, whether for less marks or for more marks, you do find ethical and professional issues as a question. Now, how important this topic is from an examination point of view 
you must have realized that because it almost comes in every single exam setting and it is such an important jargon which you should understand now first of all uh, as a student you need to understand whenever the examiner ask you evaluate or examiner ask you explain ethical and professional issues or ethical and professional matters and recommend actions this is a very common question right which comes in exam paper evaluate or explain ethical and professional issues or matters and recommendations now when you get this question and you are attempting this question back at home and in the live webinar today try to understand what this question expects from you what is the expectation of this question expectation of this question let's find the answer the first expectation of this question is from all of you is issues or matters and the second expectation of this question from all of you is actions which student will score good marks on this question a student who evaluates the issues or matters or a student who evaluate who writes the action recommends the action so a student who recommends the action and a student who evaluates or explain the meta to try to understand one thing very carefully for example when a question ask you explain or the question ask you evaluate the issue whether it is an ethical issue or a professional issue or the question asks you to evaluate or explain ethical matter or a professional matter whatever that is a lot of time the student don't explain or evaluate the matter carefully i was discussing this yesterday i hope you will all agree with me that whenever you need to explain something or, and whenever you need to evaluate something in a triple a paper whatever you are evaluating in a triple a paper whatever you are explaining in a triple a paper you need to develop you need to develop your point reasonably am i right did i guided you yesterday when i was discussing business risk with you you need to develop your point reasonably and when you're developing your point reasonably that's like three to four sentences three to four sentences is a good enough sentences to develop your point reasonably for one mark because every ethical issue or every professional issue is worth one mark so every ethical and professional issue is worth one mark so a three to four line sentences will be good to develop your point reasonably and to justify that you are explaining secondly it should be sync to case when you're writing your point it should not be out of case it should be sync to case your answer when you're writing your answer your answer should be sync to case your answer should be extracted out of the case that is a wonderful answer so when you sync your answer to the case study when you extract your answer out of the case study and you develop your point reasonably you will get one mark now for example you you get to a situation in an exam paper where the question says you are a manager you are a manager in the you are a manager for the audit client x y z company so you are a manager for an audit client x y z company right and you are currently performing audit of the financial statements you are currently performing the audit of the financial statements you are currently performing the audit of the financial statements the management of xyz company has asked you to prepare the financial statements for this year audit for this year audit as the financial as the finance manager as the finance manager has left in emergency has left in emergency 
full stop for example this is just a situation right just to just to guide you this is just a layman situation right don't ask me questions on the situation because i just created a fabricated situation right you are a manager right uh, in a in a client xyz and you're currently performing the audit of the financial statements the management of xyz company has asked you to prepare the financial statements along with the audit of the financial statement because the finance manager is left in a, in an emergency whatever that is now you write an answer and you need to uh, if you need to explain the ethical issues for example explain the ethical issue explain the ethical issue and recommend action for example question mark now just want to guide you how you develop a point before i take you to an actual exam paper now for example you're writing an answer and you start to write an answer and you say okay there is a self review threat you put a heading that's the best way to present an answer in an exam paper right you put a heading self review threat like this and under the self review thread you start explaining your answer you will say preparing the financial statements preparing the financial statements alongside alongside performing the audit alongside performing the audit of Uh, can all of you hear me? Okay, that's great. So there was just a, a two minutes uh, break due to uh, a disconnectivity issue and uh, we are back live, right? So I hope you're all there and uh, we were in the middle of a discussion. Uh, I, I give you a short scenario. I hope you re recall that scenario and we were discussing the self review threat, right? So when you say a self review threat and you develop a point on self review threat, you say, 
preparing the financial statement alongside performing the audit of financial statement give rise to a self review threat give rise to a self review threat for a stop and after this a student immediately writes there should be two different teams for audit of financial statement and for preparing financial statements for a stop and you come out of the exam hall look at the answer of the student look at this first answer of a student here the first one this is not at all an impressive answer look look at the second answer and tell me which is better the second student start with the same sentence right over here control c control v and he says will give rise to a self review threat full stop because the audit the audit team will be reluctant the audit team will be reluctant to review their own work later in the audit the audit team will be reluctant to review their own work that is the financial statements that is the financial statements later in the audit so the audit team will be reluctant to review their own work that is the financial statements later in the audit so that is the reason it will give rise to a self review threat so has the student justified why it is a self review threat because can you look at this word because over here which was missing in the first case so is is the second answer better than the first answer because the second answer has a because which was not in the very first case so just telling it is a self review threat is useless till the time you tell why it is a self review threat because the audit team will be reluctant this reluctant is very important here reluctant to review their own work later in the audit for a stop and then you tell if x y z is a is a non listed company is a non listed company the financial statements could be prepared with a use of a different team for audit and a different team for preparing financial statements alongside a second partner review alongside a second partner review alongside a second partner review of the engagement now which is a more impressive answer the first one or the second one because the question was not telling me whether it is a listed company or a non listed company so i tell examiner if xyz is a non listed company you can you you just take one assumption in exam right not two i just take one assumption if xyz is a non listed company and i, I wrote my safeguard because the question was silent look at the third answer tell me is that a good answer the third answer the student copy pasted everything from here and he take it to number 3 copy paste control c control v and this was a student who who is a place winner student he says preparing financial statement will give rise to a self review threat because the audit team will be reluctant to review their own work full stop later in the audit full stop because he was a place winner student he went on to explain something full stop moreover moreover preparing financial statements is a management responsibility is a management responsibility and if the auditor prepares the financial statement it uh, it uh, if the auditor prepares the financial statement the auditor will assume management responsibility the auditor will assume management responsibility for a stop moreover see the student brilliant student he says I, I want to be a place winner. Moreover, preparing financial statement is a management responsibility. Is is that important? And if the auditor prepares the financial statement, the auditor will assume the management responsibility. Now, is is it a better student? Definitely. And then he says, if X Y Z is a non-listed company, if X Y Z is a non-listed company, the financial statements could be prepared with different teams and different and second partner review. However, it is prohibited it is prohibited 
to assume management responsibilities. It is prohibited to assume management responsibilities. Full stop. Even though I can have different teams, right? I, I hope my voice is getting through to all of you. Even though. Even though I can have different teams, but I'm telling examiner. However, it is prohibited to assume management responsibilities. So eventually can I prepare the financial statements and do the audit at the same time? Perhaps no, because assuming management responsibilities is prohibited. Now who is a good answer? Which is a good answer? Let's see the marks. The first student will only get 0.5 marks. For telling the threat max. And there would be two different teams for audit and preparing the financial statement. It's quite a vague statement. Two different teams not explaining uh, whether it is a listed company or a non listed company. Maximum you will get a half a mark for the safeguard. So the maximum marks you will get is one mark in the first situation. In the second situation, because you explained self review thread wonderfully, you will get your full one mark here. And because you explained the safeguard very well, you will get an extra one mark here. One mark for the issue, one mark for the action. When you go to the third student, the third student will get one mark for a self review threat, will get another one mark for a management threat, will get one mark for the safeguard, one mark for the safeguard of the self review threat, and one mark for the safeguard of a management threat, too. So this student is taking a total score of four marks. And yes, you can write a heading management thread even if you want to. So if you want to write a heading over here management thread, you can write a heading over here management thread. You can write a heading over here self review thread if you want to self review thread. So you can break that answer into two parts. If you want to do that way. But tell me which student is giving a more impressive answer. So do you understand what is the literal meaning of the word develop your point reasonably and and sync to case so so was the management threat sync to case or not no there is no maximum marks for uh, for and uh, there, there is no maximum marks for a case right you need to identify as many issues as possible from within the situation so i think the maximum situations was self review management threat and Two safeguards. I think that that is the maximum we can do for this situation, right? So, is it is everyone clear with this demonstration? Uh, has this opened your mindset, everyone? So, will everyone remember the marking scheme now? You have one mark per issue, well explained, and you have one mark per action recommended. Is everyone clear? Can we move on? Okay, so you find uh, you find my perspective implementing in exam paper. How to develop a point? Okay, that's great. So this is the marking scheme, right? You have to follow in the exam paper for ethical issues and for professional issues. Now, now move to the next example. Now th there is an article by the examiner, which is an exam technique article part one. Exam technique article part one. Exam technique article part one. Right. And this exam technique article part one is on ethics. I would recommend all of you if you have not read this article before to read this article after the webinar ends today in 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 the next 24 hours please do uh, do read this article right you need to read this article the reason why you read this article is that this article will tell you about the do's and don'ts of the examiner and the examiner will give you examples of how you write a good answer on ethics so if you want to see the examples of how to write a good answer on ethics, please read this article so you can really refine your answers. So this is a wonderful reading. I, I, I prefer you all do it if you have not done it before. 
you might be giving AAA for the first time and you've not yet read this article, right? This article has already been shared with all of you. Okay, just one last thing before we take on the exam paper. Right, so this is next, the last thing. Now, when you know the exam technique article, you know how to write an answer on ethics. You have read the article and you have attended the webinar and you know the way of writing the answer in, in an organized manner and how to score one mark for an issue and one mark for an action. You need to do ample practice for this topic. The ample practice for this topic I would recommend is that do all recent papers, do all recent papers. Right, you do all recent papers. Which recent papers will you do for ethics? You start from September 18 first, then you go to December 18, then you go to the March, June 19, next, then you go to the September, December 19, next, then you go to the March 20 paper uploaded on ACC website and the final September, December 2020 paper. I think this is sufficient. If you just practice all these papers for ethical professional and quality control issues this is a reasonable and a fair practice for your june 2021 exams is that clear to all of you the definition of an ample practice for the topic we are going through in the webinar today okay and please do read the article part one ethics which is very very important right Okay, moving on. Let's start with the practice and let's start practice with September 18 question number one actually. Because that will give you a real real exam rigor of what I'm trying to explain you and and a real real exam rigor of what is basically the meaning of the word professional issues. Uh, just before I step into the question, I believe uh, students uh, in journaling are very good when it when they look at the term ethical issues the student comfort level is very good with ethical issues am i right students comfort level with ethical issues is far better because you do that in the double AP paper even but and you are very good on it you identify them the only thing you're bad at it is explaining but i think 100 percent students identify the ethical issues but the bad side of the student is explaining the ethical issue so i think that if you look at the student comfort level on ethical issues if i can just make a table here and guide you something in a very effective manner uh okay just let me insert a table over here and uh, then discuss something with you okay uh if you look at the uh, ethical issues i think in terms of identifying the students are good i hope you agree but in terms of explaining, uh, the students are weaker. And that's where I just guided you above how to explain, right? So I hope you got some relevance of explaining. You got some relevance of how you develop a point. And I will still be doing a practice from September 18, question number one, and the December 18, question number three, to make you stronger on explaining. But I hope you agree with identifying good and explaining weaker. Is, is that mostly mostly where the students are? Do you agree with this phenomena? <clears throat> okay, that's that's great, Salva, if you agree 100%. Okay, because it's very difficult to get 100% uh, agreement from a student, but that's good. Okay, look at the next term, professional issues. Professional issues. Identifying. The students are bad at identifying professional issues. They are confused at identifying professional issues. They even don't know what are professional issues. Don't know what they are. Question mark. Explaining. If they're bad at identifying, explaining is a big cross. I hope you agree with this. And that's where the webinar is. That's where the day two is to guide you about how you can improve your comfort level on ethical and professional issues the students are bad 
confused they don't know what professional issues are i hope you all agree with me and explaining if you are bad at identifying what will you explain explaining is a big danger here explaining is a bit a big danger here right so sh should we mitigate this table in the next one hour should we find a better mitigation of this table in the next one hour should i make you stronger should i make you stronger in ethical issues number one and should i make you better in identifying the uh, professional issues number two right so let's start the journey i need to give you a break as well so i just need to keep uh, a, uh, an eye on my watch as well so another 10 minutes to the break right so we can start on with the practice of the september 18 question number one and uh, the practice will guide you about the student comfort level improving so let's start the first practice september 18 question number one let me take it on the fresh page and we'll start the journey okay september 18 question number one okay i'm putting the question on the practice platform we have to do it on the practice platform right okay so let's go down to the practice platform again uh okay we have the practice platform uh we come back to it we go to the catalog advanced audit and assurance and we have the international paper acc official resources past exam papers and we need to click on the september 18 paper again so i assign the september 18 paper i go to the left hand side and i find the september 18 paper assigned so I open the September 18 paper. I start the September 18 paper from zero. Now this try to understand one thing which I didn't guided you in my first two days. Whenever you open a paper or you open a paper in the actual exam, the very first screen you are looking for right in front of you is an instruction screen. You have 10 minutes to read instruction. The total time you have for a computer based exam is 205 minutes where 10 minutes is for reading the instructions and 195 minutes is what you have for reading planning and writing the answer so actually in the pen and paper exams you used to have 195 minutes right i hope you agree but in the computer based exams you have 10 minutes extra but those extra 10 minutes is for reading the instructions right so you read the instruction. See, this is the instruction screen. You read it and you click next. Then you come to the next instruction screen. You read it and you click next. You read the next instruction screen. You click next. Next instruction, next. Another instructions, next. And then automatically you come to the final page and you click next and your paper will start. This is the start of the paper. You click next and it says, if you are ready to begin your exams, please click yes. So the moment you uh, click yes, your 195 minutes start and you click yes. So you start with section A and in the section A, you go down and you come to the question number one, which I want to solve with you. Now I have already guided you what you read first and what you read second on my day one. I hope you all remember. So I'm not, not guiding you on that. I'm directly taking on the partner email. When you open the partner email, you come to know what is the requirement. Now the requirement in the partner email is that you have to prepare a briefing note all of you know that every time the question number one is to be done in a format of a briefing note so we have to prepare a briefing note but we are looking for one requirement of a briefing note which is the requirement number d when you look at the requirement number d it says after considering the request in exhibit two so that means when we are answering the requirement d should we only refer to exhibit two everyone after considering the request in exhibit two from the group finance director in respect of our firm providing advice on the group integrated report discuss the ethical and professional implications of the request recommend any actions to be taken by the firm so discuss the ethical and professional implications and recommend actions control c copy and paste after considering the request in exhibit two so will will the answer be in the exhibit to everyone should i just read the exhibit two for getting my six marks answer on discuss the ethical issues for providing advice on the integrated report right okay so you go to your briefing note and you open up your briefing note 
just like I've guided you in the previous days. Again, you choose the paragraph quickly, heading number three. You quickly, quickly write a briefing note on the top. Briefing note, and you say to, you say from, you say date, sorry, you say subject, you say introduction, whatever that is, you keep filling it, and you come to the requirement A, you come to the requirement B, we're not doing it, we come to the requirement C, we're not even doing this, we come to the requirement D, which I'm doing, copy paste. So I paste my requirement over here. I need to go back to my question and I copy the requirement from here. Control C. And I go back to my word processor and I paste it over here. Control V. So my briefing note is ready. So you you prepare a briefing note. How many times have I guided you since the last two days, right? To make a briefing note. And once you complete the requirement D, which I am completing with you, you write a conclusion at the end of the briefing note right so every day i've guided you about the structure of the briefing note i hope you're now familiar with it and you copy paste the question discuss the ethical and professional issues so you're discussing the ethical issues you're discussing the professional issues and you're recommending actions how many marks do you have for this just six so not much so that's six marks to gain now you go back to the exhibit two the exhibit two is uh, the background information you open the exhibit two I've guided you, uh, I've guided about uh, conclusions uh, Sanoop in my March 21 webinar so kindly see that. Okay, you go to the exhibit 2, you scroll down and can you find a paragraph over here about integrated reporting because we need to find the ethical and professional issues from integrated reporting. So that's where I need to stop on. So I just highlight integrated reporting and I'll just read integrated reporting to identify ethical and professional issues. I'm just giving you two minutes. If you can see this in front of your screen very care carefully, if I can just zoom that up a bit. Can all of you see the integrated reporting paragraph in front of your screen? Can you just read that in two minutes and identify the ethical and professional issues before I start to identify it? You have two minutes. Your time starts now. Identify two minutes. Okay, if you have read it, uh, let's start finding the answers. Right now, it's my time. Listen to me. If you have any questions, uh, ask your questions after five minutes, right? Now, we need to work on the ethical and professional issues. We have six marks to attain. Let's see how we go down with it. The group is proud. Just, just let me in, uh, reduce the size of the window I have over here just let me reduce it to this much okay and just let it bring me down i have my briefing note in the background so i need to write the answer in the briefing note okay the group is proud uh, of this innovation and in is keen to highlight these technological developments in the integrated report so that's wonderful the group finance director has asked to lead uh, the project tasked with producing the group's first integrated report the finance director has sent the following request to the audit engagement partner. So the group, the group finance director has requested the partner about something. Let's see what is the ethical and professional issues in this request to the partner. We would like 
your firm to assist so that's one us in developing our integrated report so they want us to assist them in developing the integrated report number one so i'll copy this assist in developing the integrated reports that's number one that they want to do control c i go back to my briefing note and i come under the d part and i put the heading i put the, my control v here assist in developing the integrated report let me increase the font size so it's visible to all of you to heading number two and i scroll down now assist in developing the integrated report is the first issue and i write under this uh, assist in developing the integrated report and i'll just write the first sentence the request sorry just one minute the request to assist the request to assist in developing the integrated report will give rise to the management threat as developing the integrated report developing the integrated report is the is, is is part of management responsibility is part of management responsibility which has been given to the finance director the request to assist in developing the integrated report will give rise to management threat as developing the integrated report will give uh, integrated report is part of management responsibility and if the audit firm assist in this development the audit firm will be assuming management responsibilities so that's my one mark bracket close and i get my first one mark i hope you're all clear with that so assist in developing the integrated report so that's number one right and i go to the next point then number two I go back to my case right here and to provide assurance on it we can provide assurance that's part of the audit services that we can provide assurance but we cannot assist in developing the integrated report assurance we can give that's that's what the auditor do right as we believe this will enhance the credibility of the information it contains that's fine specifically we like, we would like your input into the choice of the key performing indicator look at this we would like your input on the choice of the key performing indicator do, do you believe this is another management threat we would like your input in the choice of the key performance and indicator so if the audit firm is involved in the choice of key performing indicator that's quite dangerous because that's a management decision so you highlight this to the examiner again and you say further further if the audit firm if the audit firm is involved if the audit firm is involved in the input in the choice of the key performing indicator which is a pure management decision which is a pure management decision the audit firm will be stepping into the role of management into the role of management and taking decisions and taking decisions taking decisions which the management should have taken so that's that's another example of a management threat right but see how would i conclude it uh, the audit firm will be stepping into the role of the management and taking decisions which the management should have taken this uh decision making process this decision making process will make audit firm familiar with management and their working will make will make audit firm familiar with the management and give rise to familiarity threat you will become sympathetic because you are working like a management i hope you, you all agree with me when you're working like a management you are involved in the decision making process you will automatically become familiar with the management because you're working with them and this will give rise to a familiarity threat as the audit firm will become 
as the audit firm will become too sympathetic too sympathetic too, uh, too sympathetic towards management towards management by taking decisions on their behalf by taking decisions on their behalf on their behalf right so i'm deliberately doing the spelling mistakes as well so you know that spellings are not accounted for it's your uh, answer which gives you the marks so you assume the management responsibility and then then in the second case uh, you will be familiar with the management which gives rise to a familiarity threat uh, i'm just highlighting this you're not highlighting this in the exam paper but i'm just highlighting this to show you that this give this is giving us me another one mark here so i hope you agree with me right i go back to my word uh, we would like your input into the choice of the key performing indicators which would be presented and how to present them and how they should be reconciled where relevant to the financial information from the audited financial statement so will will this performance indicator be extracted from the financial information in the audited financial statement will will that give rise to a self review threat because the auditor must have already audited the financial statement and the auditor will be reluctant to review the performance indicator in the integrated report so are they extracting the performance indicators from the financial information from the audited report right so financial information from the audited financial statement so the key performance indicators will be extracted from the financial information from the audited financial statements next point control v let me enlarge the size no because you're giving the advice it's it's giving rise to a management threat because you're involved in the decision making process right just i'm just taking your questions in one minute right let, let me complete the question first financial information from the audited financial statements the key performance indicators the key performance indicators for integrated report will be extracted will be extracted from the financial information in the audited financial statements this will give rise to self review threat this will give rise to a self review threat as the auditor will be reluctant to review the auditor will be reluctant to review the kpis in the integrated report when giving assurance integrated report when giving assurance knowing that they have been extracted they have been extracted from the financial statements audited by them from the financial statements audited by them so will will that make auditor reluctant because the auditor knows that the KPIs have been taken from the audited financial statement. So when the auditor is giving an assurance on the integrated report, will the auditor be critically evaluating the KPIs? Will the auditor deeply analyzing the KPIs? No, because he knows these KPIs have been taken from the financial statements audited by them. So will that make auditor reluctant? So will that give rise to a self-review thread one mark? So we have brought three ethical issues, one being the management responsibility, one being the familiarity thread, one being the self review thread. Further, if the request, if the request for uh, assisting, if the request for assisting the uh, assist, uh, if the request for assisting in developing the integrated report, developing the integrated report uh, is accepted. Uh, it will generate more income or fees for the audit firm from the audit firm as the company is already their audit client as a company is already their audit client so will will more income come to you if a request for assisting in developing the integrated report is accepted it will generate more income for the audit firm as the company is already their audit client which will give rise to self interest threat which will give rise to a self interest threat for a stop so more income will come to you if you accept it now you come to the safeguards 
and you tell because you tell them that assuming management responsibilities is prohibited assuming management responsibilities is prohibited let me just confirm one thing if i'm not wrong uh this company if i go back to the partner email just to confirm one thing from here okay they they, they have an audit committee right they have an audit committee uh that's been in the briefing note so i uh that is a better assumption to assume it is a listed company right so they have an audit committee so my answer would say assuming management responsibilities is prohibited primarily because primarily because the company or because the group is listed because the group is a listed entity Assuming management responsibilities is prohibited primarily because the group is a listed entity. So the audit firm cannot assist the group uh, in uh, developing integrated report. However, the report can be developed. The report can be developed by the management and the audit firm and the audit firm can only give assurance and the audit firm can only give assurance as part of non audit services is that clear to everyone so you cannot step into the shoes of the management right it's a listed company but if the management prepares the integrated report you can give them an assurance you can give them an assurance right that is possible so you get one mark for writing the safeguard so this is how you are formulating things into into the case study uh, and you can also think about an advocacy threat here because you are assisting them assisting them means you're giving them a, a sort of an advice on how they should develop an integrated report so a lot of students was asking me about advocacy threat that is also possible right because you are trying to promote the interest of the management so do you believe it is the interest of the management that they want an integrated report and if you assist them is, is that promoting the interest of the management? So will, will this give rise to an advocacy threat as well if you want to write that down? But are you finding a way of extracting answer and writing answer everyone? Can you give headings in the exam paper? You can give headings over here management threat like this. You can give headings over here familiarity threat. So the examiner can know which which threats have you identified. Familiarity threat. You can give headings over here like uh, self interest threat so your paragraphs can get break up. You can do the headings after you complete the answer in a computer based exams and then you write sorry this paragraph was about self review threat. The next paragraph was about self interest threat and the next paragraph was about uh, actions actions action games last. Right so how many marks have I got out of six? by showing you a, a, a quick demonstration you have to complete the six marks answer right i guided you about five now right after the break i'll i'll use the same question because the question was asking you identify and explain ethical and professional issues we did identify the ethical issues right do you agree do we identify we have written the actions yes we have written the actions but have we touched upon in the six marks answer any professional issues? No. So right after the break, what I will be guiding you is uh, that if the question is asking you ethical and professional issues. Plus the actions like the September 18 question, we have done justice to ethical issues. We have done justice to actions, but for professional issues, we have a big question mark. What is the suspense behind professional issues in this question? We are attempting September 18 question number one a and what learning will you get about professional issues because students are bad in identifying professional issues and that continues. So right after the break, I'll be guiding you about the professional issues, right? And I'll be doing the December 18 paper as well. So take a break uh, till 1030 Pakistan standard time a 15 minutes break and be back to the classroom. I hope you you will all be interested to knowing the professional issues from this paper we were attempting. Right. 
there might be many professional issues, right? So Mary and Salva, please ensure you join after the break for knowing what are professional issues. So right after the break, we'll discuss that. Okay, I'll put the screen in front because a lot of students wants to copy the answer so they can copy the answer from here. So I'll put the screen during the break. And you can copy the answer right from here. Right, so off to a break and 10:30 uh, p.m. Be back to the live class. Have all of you heard that? 10:30 p.m. Back to the live class. 15 minutes, right? I'm muting my mic, and please drop your feedback for the overall session so far. Uh, that that would really be helpful. How was the session so far? Uh, please drop your feedback. And please watch the previous day's recordings as well if you missed them out. And I will resume back in 15 minutes uh, after a short break. Thank you.
okay welcome back everyone uh, i hope all of you can hear me can you just confirm that okay thank you so we are back from the break and we are resuming the last part of the day three today now just before the break uh, we were looking at the september 18 uh, question number 1d uh, which was about the integrated reporting and the management asking the audit firm that can they assist them in uh, developing the integrated report and the question was asking you to identify the ethical and professional issues and recommend any action we almost develop a five marks answer focusing on the management thread the familiarity thread the self-review thread but i think the message you got uh, right before the break every threat i developed uh, was it just the identification of the threat or uh, does it have the explanation of why it is a threat so did i just identified the threat or did i explained why it is a threat was was that the case every time i wrote for a, a one mark answer prior to the break so every time you're picking up an ethical issue you need to ensure that you explain it to get the full one mark now let's come back and see what basically are professional issues now you need to understand professional issues broadly uh, in whichever question the examiner asks you professional issues i'm just taking an example from september 18 currently the what we are doing question number one and you can watch my previous webinars as well i think i i did explain about professional issues a lot more in my march 21 webinar even but let let me explain that in a different context this time professional issues september 18 question number one d do you all agree with me that in the September 18 question number 1D, the group has requested the audit firm to provide an additional to provide a non audit service? Is, is that the case? Is that the summary of the case? The group has requested the audit firm to provide a non audit service, which is to assist them in developing the integrated reporting. Is, is that a non audit service? And are we already the auditor of the group? Do you all agree? Are we already performing the audit of the group? Right? So the group has requested the audit firm to provide a non audit service, right? Now, in that request, in that request, to provide the non audit service we have already identified the ethical issues in that request right we have identified that if we accept the request it will give rise to self review self interest familiarity management threat etc so the request to provide the non audit service have already resulted in some of the ethical issues but because the group has requested you to perform a non audit service you need to identify this request in the context of professional issues as well now what basically are professional issues now one of the most important professional issues is that because they have they are asking you to provide a non audit service and this is a fundamental part of your syllabus which is known as practice management do you know the practice management syllabus area right accepting a new audit client or accepting a service from an existing client so the group has asked you to provide a non audit service. What are professional issues? Because they have offered you to provide a non audit service, some questions will come in the mindset of the partner. The very first question which will come in the mindset of the partner is Do we have competence over integrated reporting? Have we ever offered integrated reporting to any other client? Do we have competence on integrated reporting? If we have, then only we can accept the service, otherwise, not. So do we have competence over integrated reporting? Have the audit firm ever offered integrated reporting services to other clients? They might have, they might not have, right? So do you understand? They, they were offering you a non audit service, right? And as an audit firm, you will think, do we have competence over integrated reporting? Can we offer this service? Can we offer this non audit service? Can we not offer this non audit service? So can we offer, can we not? Is, is that a valid question which will come in the mindset of the partner? Can we offer or can we not? Is that right? Next, deadlines. Uh, what deadlines to complete work? What 
dead lines to complete work on the integrated service or on the non-ordered service. What deadlines to complete work? Is 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 it realistic deadline? Is it realistic deadline so we can perform work with quality? Is it realistic or not? So we can complete work. So whenever you get a request from the client, the request carry ethical problems which you need to identify from the case study, right? So the request carries ethical issues which you need to identify from the case. But most of the time, the professional issues are more of the book knowledge which you need to connect to the case. Right? So you will think about your competence. No, uh, you will write the action in the last Rabia. Uh, that management responsibility is not allowed. That is an action. You first identify all the issues and then you write the action, right? So management responsibility is not allowed is the action you write in the last after you write all the ethical and professional issues. But first in the exam paper, you need to identify the issues. Suppose you start a six marks question and in the first line of the six marks question you write the management. You cannot assume the management responsibility full stop. How will you gain your six marks? So the action has to come in the end of your answer. So you gain your six marks first by writing issues and then by writing actions. So is everyone clear what I was telling you in between the question I attended from Rabia Zen that the ethical issues are given in the case paper and we identified them from the case, right? But most of the time the professional issues is a book knowledge which you need to connect to the case. Read this line again. So do we have competence over integrated reporting? We need to connect that to the case study. Uh, what about the deadlines? Is the management telling us about the deadlines? Are the deadlines realistic or unrealistic? If they are realistic, we can accept it. Otherwise, we not. So these these are basically the professional issues. More reliance, reliance on integrated reporting, reliance on integrated reporting by third parties, and the auditor liability. The auditor liability. If if the auditor gives a wrong assurance on the integrated report. And the integrated report is relied by the uh, third parties. Can can they file a case against the auditor? Can they make auditor liable? So is, is is the auditor giving assurance on the integrated report? Yes. And do you believe integrated report is relied by numerous third parties? So will will that increase the exposure of the auditor? Right. So auditor liability can also increase. That is that is another professional issue which you can highlight in the case study. Now, if I look at the six marks question, if I look at the six marks question here, before I give you other examples of uh, professional issues, if I look at the six marks question here, I had six marks, right? Now, in the six marks, you need to write ethical issues. In the six marks, you need to write the professional issues. In the six marks, you need to write the actions. Now, it's totally up to you. How would you go about writing the answer? There can be multiple equations. The equation number one, for example, you can make your own probabilities just to clear our mindset of a student because a lot of times the students are so confused on this that they really make a mess in the exam paper. Uh, insert a table. Okay, let me put some columns to the right one, two, three, four, and let me put a uh, row above okay just give me one minute okay now suppose this is a situation once this is a student one student one right and the student one wants to get six marks insert below okay the student one wants to get six marks how would a student one get a six marks he write five ethical issues no professional issue and one action that's one way of writing the answer there is a second student in the exam hall who has well prepared himself or herself. Uh, he writes four ethical issues, one professional issue and two actions, six marks. There is another student in the exam hall, student three. Uh, the student three writes three ethical issues uh, and he writes two professional issues and write one action, six marks. There is another student sitting in the exam hall, student four. Student four, he writes just 
two ethical issues. He writes three professional issues and he writes one ethical issues and scores six marks. So are you finding all of these students getting to the desired objective six marks and all of them are correct? Because if in the exam paper there are many ethical issues and you just write ethical issues and you don't write any professional issues that that's perfectly fine. But examiner will not give you any negative marks because you have achieved the target of six marks from the case study. So can there be different ways of achieving the target? Student one achieve the target student two achieve the target student three achieve the target student four achieve the target. So some students can write more professional issues and less ethical issues. Some write more ethical issues, less professional issues, but that that is how you can bifurcate your answer. OK, just just in the in the student two. Sorry, one one. Right, so. Are you finding different students getting to the score of six? And so does that mitigate your question that should we forcefully write professional issues every time? You, you cannot you can skip them even if you think the ethical issues have developed your answer. But you should have a sound mindset of what professional issues are and if you can write them, that's wonderful. If you can relate them, that's wonderful. So in the question we were solving uh, in September 18, can can we just write about some professional issues this way if I go if I go back to the workspace and I can show you some answer on the workspace. See right after my self interest threat. I can put my cursor and I can write some more answer for September 18 paper self interest threat and I increase my font size and I start writing the answer. I start writing about competence heading and a right under. The audit firm need to consider their competence level for offering non audit services for offering non audit services over integrated reporting over integrated reporting if the audit firm has desired experience into this type of service in this type of service then only the request can be accepted then only the request can be accepted so you're telling examiner that the audit firm needs to look at the competence so competence becomes a professional issue then you write the next one uh, reliance by the third party reliance by the third parties you make this bigger heading two. you come down and you write the answer. The audit firm. Need to be careful. When providing assurance. When providing assurance on integrated reporting. As the integrated report will be relied upon. The integrated report will be relied upon by many stakeholders by many stakeholders which increases the liability exposure for the auditor which increases the liability exposure for the auditor therefore the auditor if accepts the engagement if accepts the engagement needs to exercise a greater due care needs to exercise a greater due care a greater due care for a stop see i wrote two professional issues so this is how you can formulate you, you're not bifurcating the answer this is an ethical issue and this is a professional issue anywhere in the answer i wrote this is an ethical issue and this is the professional issue or i was just explaining the issue and why it is an issue I was not saying this is an ethical issue or this is a professional issue, right? Which most of the time the students keeps confusing at. 
is is everyone clear about my voice can you all hear me can you respond to me are you clear with competence and reliance by the third parties are you clear on the discussion of the professional issues i have with you so far so please don't forcefully write a professional issue if it is logical if it is relatable you can relate that to a case write it so something which is very very important which a student should learn uh, about professional issues further let me let me continue that professional issues something you need to know more about professional issues today that in terms of professional issues uh, only write professional issues when they are relatable to the case only write when they when they relate with case even though they come from the book knowledge right competence uh, auditor liability their book knowledge but you can relate them with the case study right right so only write when they relate with the case as i just did for september 18 paper you should know the broad examples you should know the broad examples of professional issues so that you can fit them up uh, for example the broad examples of professional issues is competence deadlines uh, due care professional skepticism professional skepticism professional behavior they're all examples of professional issues but you need to relate them with a case study if possible then only we'll score marks so when you're writing a professional issue it is very very important that you explain why it is an issue so competence can become an issue if you don't have competence even though you can accept the service but you don't have competence then do you believe competence is becoming a limiting factor in accepting a service you have competence but the deadlines are unrealistic so do you believe the unrealistic deadlines is becoming an issue in acceptance of a service right and please remember one thing uh, lo look at this look at this this is the student's confusion this is the student confusion still i'm getting these questions uh, in my panel and i need to i need to address them because again the problem remains the same see uh, in in a triple a paper am i writing the answer this way i'm making two columns in one column i write ethical issues and in the other column i write the professional issues is is that the way i'm writing the answer uh, am i am i doing the bifurcation of the issues or am i telling examiner this is an issue and why it is an issue will the examiner reward me marks for the classification of the issue or will the examiner reward me marks for explaining why it is an issue am, am i a manager in the triple a paper or am i a junior in the triple a paper so is is that the right way to present an answer ethical issues and professional issues is that the right way to bifurcate the answer no that's that's a total wrong way to write an answer so let's let's put a big cross over here a big cross this is not the right way now what's the right way the right way is that that you identify the issue whatever the issue is whether it is an ethical issue or a professional issue whatever you identify the issue and then you explain why it is an issue there are no marks for classification of issue uh, Umar, can you just hold for one minute? Let me complete my sentence before I can respond to your question, right? Because if I respond to your question, I will get distracted from my uh, writing I'm doing on the screen. So you identify the issue, whatever that is, ethical or professional, and you explain why it is an issue. There are no marks for the classification of the issue so when when i wrote my answer on the practice platform did i bifurcate it this is an ethical issue this is a professional issue no did, did i made the headings answer like this answer september 18 question number one d did i made headings like this ethical issues professional issues did i made headings like this and did i made headings like this when i when i was answering the paper because if you make headings like this, you're bifurcating. So is there a need for bifurcation? Understand you are a manager, right? You are a manager, not a junior. 
if the junior is involved in the paper then bifurcation is fine in the double a paper you are a junior in the triple a paper you are a manager try to understand your role Right, so Omar, I've responded to your question right in the chat box. Is that clear to everyone? Uh, are you finding some better definition of professional issue, a better mindset of professional issues? That from a case study, first identify the ethical issues as we did in the time before the break, and then you recall your book knowledge. And if you think there is an element of competence which you can relate to the case, there is an element of a deadline you can relate to a case. There is an element of a due care. There is an element of a liability you can relate to a case then relate that to a case only if it is relatable. Now look at my answer for September 18. Did I forcefully wrote competence? Or did I justified competence in the context of the case because integrated is a new phenomena integrated reporting is a new phenomena. So it's quite possible that the audit firm don't have the desired level of competence on integrated reporting because integrating integrated reporting is a growing phenomenon in the world. So is, is, is everyone clear on the discussion we had in the last 15 20 minutes on the professional issues? Are you clear and you still need to watch my March 21 webinar, right? On, on how you go about professional issues in exam paper. So the final summary I would like to discuss and share with all of you is this. See ethical. And professional issues. Look at this structure and be very responsive to me. For example, you're a student and you are appearing for junior exams, right? You read a case. And you identify issues while you were reading case now some of those issues were ethical some of those issues were ethical because a student can easily identify the ethical issue because the student knows the self review self interest familiarity advocacy intimidation so some of these issues were ethical because student can pick them well wherever there is an ethical threat. So when you're reading the case, you can pick up the ethical issues very well because you are good on that. So the moment you find there is a self review threat or the moment you find there is an advocacy threat, you immediately pick that issue because student can pick them well wherever there is an ethical threat and they go on to it. But when you are reading a case, there might be an issue which you have identified, which is not a self review threat, which is not a self interest threat, which is not an advocacy threat, which is not an intimidation threat, which is not a familiarity threat, but that is an issue in the context of the case. So there, there might be an issue in the case which is not an ethical issue, but you are sure this is an issue, but you are sure it is an issue. So will you will you be concerned about classifying the issue or will you just be concerned about explaining it to the examiner why it's an issue? So in a case paper. There might be five issues and on the four issues you are very sound because you know this is a threat. But on the fifth issue, you know this is an issue. But you are, you are confused. Is it an ethical issue? No, is it a professional issue rather than being confused on the classification of the issue? Is it better that you explain examiner why it is an issue to score your marks? Is that clear to all of you? Right, so read the case identify the issues while you're reading the case and some of the issues uh, some of the issues will be ethical will be ethical and you will be good on that because you know them but there might be an issue in the case which is not an ethical issue you're sure this is not an ethical issue what will you do will you just skip it or will you still explain examiner that why it is an issue irrespective whether it is an ethical issue or a professional issue right akil deal that's the message right i I've, I've been talking about this for the last five minutes you just need to focus on an issue and why 
rather than telling examiner no this is an ethical issue no this is a professional issue are you getting marks for that are you getting marks for that adil you're not getting any marks for the bifurcation try to understand your role in the triple a paper adil nakwi you are a manager do manager classify things do manager classify things or the, do the manager only explains and synthesize things so your position is to synthesize your position is to explain your position is to evaluate rather than classify i hope you're all clear on that right so read number one identify number two some of these issues will be ethical and you will be wonderfully good on that but there might be some issues in the case which is not an ethical issue but you're sure it is an issue so you just need to write that down and you need to explain why you think this is an issue and score your marks is that clear to everyone and if 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 there is no professional issue in the case then can you relate your bookish knowledge as i relate in the september 18 paper in the september 18 paper was there any professional issue when i when i was reading the case tell me when when i was reading the case in the september 18 paper right here look at this when i was reading the case was there any professional issue in this paper integrated reporting but did i did i connected my bookish knowledge about competence about deadlines about uh, about the third parties but was that a logical connection to the case study was that a logical connection to the case study yes or no definitely yes right so even if there is zero professional issues in the case there is no professional issue identifiable in the case you can relate that with your bookish knowledge and construct an answer in a logical manner just as i did for september 18 paper so all of you tell me then when you were reading the september 18 paper did you identify any professional issue while you were reading it from the case study the answer has to be a big no but did did we connected the bookish knowledge and found a good answer for integrated reporting in terms of professional issues so uh, is everyone clear now in the context of the time constraint we have in the webinar right now let's let's do the same exercise on another past paper right okay i'll just do one thing because uh, i wrote my answer here and this answer needs to be with you uh, after the webinar so i'm just copying this answer from the word file from the word processor control c and I'm putting this answer on my word file, which I'll share with you, right? So you get this answer. Answer question one D September 18. So because you will be getting this answer. See, I've pasted my answer. I wrote on the word processor right on my Microsoft Word. So at the end of the day, you get this answer when I share this file with you. So at least if any one of you has missed the answer, you can still track the answer. Is that good for every one of you? Right, just let me formulate the headings uh, and make it more presentable for you. So when you get this word file, it's in a presentable form. Introduction, A, B, C, and we wrote the answer for D, and this is how we formulated the answer for D. Right, so you will get this answer. Right, no, no worries now. Okay, let's let's go to the next question uh, from the practice platform. We have December 18 paper on store. So let's go back to the practice platform. Let's open another question this time. You go back to the AAA uh, International ACC official resources past exam papers and you open the December 18 paper assign uh, in the left panel. You will have the assigned paper. You click on the assigned papers December 18 and you resume the December 18 paper and this is a December 18 paper. You click on the next. We are not doing question number one. We're doing the question number three from the December 18 paper. So you click another next, you come to the section B. You click next, you come to the question number two of the December 18 paper. You click next and you come to the question three of the December 18 paper, right? Now, when you're reading the question three of the December 18 paper, let's look at the requirements. You click on the requirements, the requirements open up and you start reading the requirements. Look at the requirement numbers B2 here. Let me highlight that for you. Comment on the ethical and professional issues arising from the review of the audit working papers and recommend 
actions which should be taken comment on the ethical and professional issues arising from the review of the audit working papers and recommend actions look at this from the review from the review of the audit working papers so in the case when i'm reading the case when i'm reading the case in the case when i find a paragraph on the review of the working papers should i stop there and from the review of the working papers i need to find the professional issues and i from the review of the working papers i need to find the ethical issues and i need to recommend actions how many marks 15 so a long answer so one mark for an issue one mark for an action and you need to accumulate them to 15 marks one five i will do some part of it and you will carry on is that clear to all of you so should we start the journey on this question everyone okay let's start the journey we have very less time remaining so i need just to take a start and you continue okay so this is the question i copy the question and i go to my word processor and in my word processor i copied the question here so in the in my word processor i copied the question right over here i increase the font size to heading number three so it's visible to all of you and i have 15 marks to score on this question now this is the requirement number b2 so i have to tell examiner b2 so when the marker is checking the paper he knows this is the b2 okay now i need to write an answer comment on the ethical and professional issues and actions uh, from the review of the working paper so i i go back to the case paper now i have an exhibit one and i have an exhibit two can you see the exhibit two which says review notes which is the review of the working paper so should i open the exhibit one the background or should i open the exhibit two review notes because the question is saying from the review of the working paper so when i look at the word review of the working paper which exhibit should i open for answering the question b2 exhibit one or two exhibit two is everyone clear on that okay so i open my exhibit two right here on the screen and i need to find the ethical and professional issues right right here okay can you just read this exhibit two in five minutes in front of your screen everyone just let me uh, increase put it on the screen for you okay can you all see this and can you read this in the next three to four minutes before i take a start just just read this situation and see how many issues can you identify irrespective whether that is an ethical issue or that is a professional issue try to identify as many issues as possible you have three minutes to read it start everyone Yes, it, it has appeared on the screen now, right, Salva? I hope all of you can see this question on the screen. Okay, start reading. You have three minutes from now, everyone.
Okay, that's great, right? So, uh, how much have you read? It's good. And a lot of good answers are coming from the students saying there is a money laundering issue. Uh, there is a personal taxation services invoice to the company, which is wrong. So good answers from you, Aisha. Uh, self review management, self interest and familiarity thread from Sukena. That is right answers. Uh, Aisha is saying self review thread in a website development and expertise issues. That's good. You let you lend and uh, professional behavior will be compromised. Okay, that's good. Uh, and Bahawal is saying this question highlights many issues. So good. You have 15 marks to score, right? Let's let's get on track. Let's see how much can we do in the time we are left with. You uh, you review your review of the audit working paper and an initial meeting with Mr. Blacker. Uh, have identified the following potential issues following your review of the audit engagement letter and the working papers of the taxation section of the of the audit file. You have established that Thompson and Company, which is the audit firm performed the taxation computation of clean company. So you have established that uh, the audit firm is performing the tax computation for clean company. Do you believe if the audit firm is performing the tax computation for clean company? Will it give rise to a self review thread because taxation will be a liability and an expense in the financial statement? So if you are computing, if you're computing the taxation, will it give rise to a self review thread? Is that right? Okay, so that's that's the first problem. Uh, establish that Thompson and Company is providing taxation services to clean company. Control C, word processor, and I got my first point. So in the exam, you can just first jot the points before you start writing the answer. You go back to the case study and you get the next point. And completed the tax return for both the company and Mr. Blacker personally. Now try to understand a rule of thumb. The audit firm can perform personal computation of taxes. That's allowed. That's permissible. But the audit firm cannot perf cannot perform the tax computation for a client which is listed because it will give rise to a self review threat because that number will be reflected in the balance sheet and in the income statement and you will be reluctant to perform the audit. But can you perform personal taxation of the employees or Mr. Back, Mr. Blacker? Yes. So personal is allowed, but for the company, it will give rise to a self-review threat. Is that clear to everyone? So we are performing the computation for the audit firm, and we are perform for the company. Sorry, and we are performing the tax computation for Mr. Blacker. So Mr. Blacker is fine, but the company is wrong. Move on. All the taxation services have been invoiced to clean company. Is that right? All the taxation services have been invoiced to clean company as part of the total fees for the audit. Should, should we invoice the service offered to blacker to clean company or should we invoice the service offered to blacker to blacker? Is this that wrong? Is that wrong? Taxation services has been invoiced to clean company. All the taxation services has been invoiced to clean company as part of the total fees for the audit. So that's that's a major issue control C. I go back to my document and I write my next point here. So I remember that when I come back writing my 15 marks answer. So in an exam when you're reading the case, you can just copy paste the points to your word processor. So later when you write a 15 marks answer, you exactly recall the points, right? Is, is that the good way of copy pasting the points to your word processor? So you remember later to develop them into an answer, right? Okay, you move back next. Mr. Blacker personal tax return includes a number of significant number of transactions involving involving purchase and sales of property in various international locations. Is that a risk of money laundering? Is that a risk of layering that he's doing a lot of purchase and sales of property in various international locations? Is, is that giving a rise to integrity of Mr. Blacker that he might be involved in money laundering? So is, is that an issue irrespective? Is it an ethical issue or a professional issue? Is, is that an issue? So should we identify the issue or a class of issue? So we put a control C. We go back to the word processor and we write here control V. We found the third issue. You go back to the case study and you start reading more. The taxation working papers include a review of number of offshore bank accounts in Mr. Blacker name. Mr. Blacker has a number of offshore bank accounts. 
in Mr. Blacker name is is that another risk of uh, money laundering activities? Right, so is that another point control C and I go back to my word processor and I paste it over here now see in the exam when you are reading Will this copy paste help you after the reading time is over and you start writing the answer? Can you develop these points into a logical marks then? Mr. Blacker can be a significant member of the management team and he could influence the objectivity of the audit firm. That's that's perfectly right, uh, Mary. Moving on, next point. Miss, during your initial meeting with Mr. Blacker, he informed you that Clean Company is planning to develop a new website in order to offer online sales to its customer. Okay, that's good. He has asked Thomas to provide assistance with the design and implementation of the website and online system. Asked Thomas to provide assistance with the design management threat, implementation management threat, and later a self review thread because it's an online sales system. So when when you come for the audit next year, will you be reluctant to review the sales number? Will you be reluctant to review the sales number because you know this is a system which you have designed and implemented? So do you believe this will give rise to a self review thread? The team will not be identifying any issues in the in the online systems when they come for the audit next year. So how many issues we have here? Provide assistance with design and implementation. Control C. You take it to the word file and you put it paste over here and sorry just one minute i didn't copy it well let me go back to my review notes copy and you copy here control c and you move back to your word processor and you paste your answer here control v and just to remember you write over here management threat so that you, when you come to writing you know it management threat self-review Self review threat management threat. Right, because they have asked you to provide assistance with the implementation of the website and the sales system and even a self interest threat. Will you get extra income from this service if you offer them? So are you finding one way? What am I doing which you should do exactly that when you are reading an exhibit in an exam paper? Can you copy information from that exhibit to your word processor because that can really help you when you start writing the answer? Is, is that an helpful exercise? Okay, move back. Next last paragraph. As, as a result of your year end review visit at the client premises, you have learned that the audit team was invited to and subsequently attended clean companies annual office party. The the uh, the audit team was invited and they attended a party. Is is that uh, is that a self interest threat? Gifts and hospitality. Control C. You move back to the word processor. You put it over here. This is a gift and hospitality. You write under the bracket gift and hospitality. And gift and hospitality give rise to a self interest threat, which is very dangerous for the audit team. And you close the bracket. You come back. The next point. The client provided each member of the audit team with a free voucher worth $30, which could be redeemed at the venue during the party. So that's a continuation of the gift and hospitality, right? They even provided them a $30 voucher, which they can redeem at the party. So that's a continuation of the same sentence. Self interest threat. Move back. The audit senior, Paula, uh, who has worked on the audit for the last three years and has informed you that the audit team has always been encouraged to attend the parties in order to develop good client relationships. So is that a familiarity threat? Audit team has always been encouraged to attend these parties for a good client relationship. Is, is that giving rise to a familiarity threat of the audit team with the client? Do you all agree with it? So this gives rise to a familiarity threat. So now you have read the case. You close the case review notes and you close the window. Now you're writing the answer. You open your word processor already. The answer is there. Now if you're a good student, you will quickly develop this answer into 15 marks. Now just just go one by one. Establish that Thompson company provides the taxation services to com uh, compute the text. Will it give rise to a self review threat taxation services? And is the taxation services giving also rise to a self interest threat? Are you getting extra income for it? So you have a self review and you have a self interest two marks all taxation services have been have been built to the clean company. This is wrong. 
this is a wrong practice you will criticize it that the that the taxation services you have offered to mr blacker should be invoiced to mr blacker so that's a wrong practice mr blacker tax return includes a number of suspicious transactions so you will talk about the money laundering over here as one issue you will talk about client integrity issues because mr blacker is involved in money laundering possibly so you will talk about the client integrity issue you will also talk about reporting the matter to mlro reporting the matter to mlro is that right will you report this matter to mlro money laundering reporting officer or will you directly tell client that you are involved in money laundering will you do the tip off will you be doing the tip off or will you be telling your mlro everyone the mlro right not not telling directly the client that you are involved in money laundering okay there are number of offshore bank accounts in the name of mr blacker so that give rise to a suspicion that give rise to a suspicion that mr blacker is involved in money laundering for sure he is involved in layering layering of the black money to white money okay mr thomas has asked you to provide design and implementation of the website management thread self review self interest uh, the audit team has been invited to the party self interest and the team has been encouraged to attend the parties for good relationship familiarity thread see i've just given you a rough sketch of the answer if you can convert this you can almost reach 15 marks if you keep writing actions heading number 2 can i just copy this answer to my word file so you get this answer and you can formulate this into a full answer later everyone this is just a sketch of question 3b from december 18 paper will you complete it as your assignment back at home everyone will you be encouraged to draft an answer all of you just give me one minute if i can formulate this file in a very good manner so when you get this file you can take a print out and you can start attempting your answers in a good manner september 18 and after the september 18 we have just done the sketch of the december 18 So have you got any benefit from this exercise have you got the way of reading the case extracting the points now you have bullets how many bullets you have on screen 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and i think in some bullets we have more than two points and three points to write so can you easily stretch your stretch your answer to 15 marks so have you found the way of reading the question that when a question asks you to comment on ethical and professional issues your focus has to be on issues not on the classification you just read the case whatever you find from the case identify it and then start explaining it to the examiner along with actions to score your full 15 marks is that not an easy approach here are you all comfortable with what you learned from the day 3 today right let me give you a summary and you complete this case yourself now first of all just before i wrap up my day 3 today i want to discuss some few very important things which is like an icing on the cake and you should listen that before you exit day 3 listen to me carefully key learnings number 1 uh over the day 3 today have i encouraged you all to use the triple a cbe practice platform and is that encouragement level going up and up every day so are you all encouraged to use the practice platform is that right and have you started using it and are you finding some ease on the practice platform now everyone waiting for your answers okay that's good next the key learning today is not just to encourage you all to use a triple a practice platform but also an encouragement of how you go about doing analytical procedures using calculators if you want to do that or using spreadsheet have i given you both the examples how you use the calculators and how you use the spreadsheet 
uh, using the doing the analytical procedures and you have to choose the one which is best for you, right? So you have to do that from the day three further. You need to conclude whether you will be using a calculator or a spreadsheet for the analytical procedures. If that comes to your exam paper, uh, will you carry your own calculator to exam hall? You need to take a decision on that. So that was another important thing we came today, right? Uh, in terms of the rough papers. I was very clear that the rough papers will be available if you are going for computer based exams at centers. The rough papers will be available to you and they will be taken away from you at the end of the exam. But if you are giving a computer based exams, which is remotely invigilated because of the COVID situations, then the rough papers will not be available. So you have to use you will not use the rough papers rather you just directly copy paste things from your exhibits to the word processor. Do you believe the copy paste of information from exhibit to word processor saves your time when you later come writing the answer? Copy paste of information from exhibits to word processor later save time when you write answer. So does is, is, is CV exams beneficial? You need to find the pros and cons of paper based exams and computer based exams. The copy paste is a wonderful function, right? The last thing. Have you found a good definition of the marking schemes of ethical and professional issues today? Marking scheme for ethical and professional issues today. Have you find a definition of how to Evaluate an ethical issue. How to evaluate an ethical issue? Have you found that? Have you found the way of uh, identifying? Uh, sorry, the way of I. Sorry, have you got a good definition of what basically are professional issues today? Professional issues. The, have you got some examples today? Have that develop your mindset, everyone. And finally. Have you got some key understandings today? No classification of issues, no classification of issues. Only explain the issue and why it is an issue to score one mark, and there's one mark for writing an action. Now, one last thing before I wind up my session Code of Ethics is an area of a syllabus. Where every time I recommend student to read the textbook code of conduct is the only area of the syllabus where I recommend my students to read the chapter from the textbook, whichever textbook BPP or Kaplan. Because there is so much so many rules you need to remember for a listed company and for a non listed company. There are so much you need to remember for a safeguard. So it is very very good that if you read the book chapter, you will know the safeguards for a listed company and for a non listed company. You will know the different situations which can come to your exam paper. So as a tutor, I always recommend that code of conduct is an area where you should be good at from the book reading and and the last thing from the code of conduct is very very important, which we did on the day one and the day two. You know there have been some changes in the code of conduct. There have been some changes in code of conduct and there is an exposure draft to that which we covered on the day one and day two. I hope you all remember that. So that could be really important for your exams in June. So please ensure you know the exposure draft. Please ensure you know the changes which have come into the code of conduct. How many changes the code of conduct has introduced? Do you remember the exact number everyone? I guided you on the day one and day two. Exactly. Very good. Five changes. And have I given you a summary of that? Do you have a summary document? I hope you've taken a printout of that, right? Okay, that's great. So I hope you had a productive session today. You learned a lot from the session today. Can you give me a feedback quickly before I tell you the agenda of meeting tomorrow? Uh, Numan, you have to practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, your typing speed will be excellent. You, your exams is on the 7th of June. You have more than a month to improve your typing speech. Is that clear? Okay, now just before you give me the feedback of the session today, 
I'm just telling you what's the agenda for tomorrow. You need to watch the previous webinars, right? Will you be watching the webinar for March 21 and December 20 everyone? Is that encourageable? Okay, good. Tomorrow we are meeting for something I didn't discuss in my last webinar, which is uh, March 21 webinar because in the last webinar I focused on other assignments a lot. So this time I think I thought it's better to discuss with you the procedures and evidence. So tomorrow I will be discussing with you procedures and evidence. I'll spend half the class tomorrow or half the session tomorrow on discussing procedures and I'll discuss half the session tomorrow on discussing audit evidence. Because in the last webinar for March 21, I focused on other assignments. So that's the agenda for tomorrow. Come prepared with it so we can have an interactive session tomorrow. Thank you very much for participating all of you in the live webinar and I'll see you all tomorrow with the day four of this ongoing AAA practice to pass for June 21 exams. I hope you had a productive learning session today in the last three hours and you will be participating more in the next two days to come before you need to sit down and prepare well for your upcoming exams on the 7th of June. Right? Do watch my March 21 webinar. Do watch my December 20 webinar because that will give you an excellent platform to prepare you, yourself for the June 2021 exams. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'll see you tomorrow back again, uh, 8 30 p.m. Pakistan time. Take care of yourself and of your people around you. Have a nice day. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.